If you're new to the channel and if you're watching this video, this video is part of a larger tutorial series on the Ray framework. So if you are coming to this and you have no idea what I'm talking about, the earlier videos might help. I just wanted to give a quick comparison of Spark versus Ray since most people who are probably doing similar things that you would do with Ray are using some distributed computing framework like Spark. Maybe they're using a large database and doing things in SQL. So hopefully this will clear up any misconceptions behind when would I use something like Spark and when would I use a framework that does large scale data processing versus when would I use something like Ray and where does Ray really excel? So Ray being the newer framework or the newcomer to the game here, people might wonder, does Ray do things better than what's already out there? So Spark has a coarse grained API in the sense that you often run a function or transformation on a whole chunk of data. So with Spark, you have a single logical file, even though that file is distributed across a whole cluster. And you say, I wanna run this transformation or this function on all of this data, on all of the machines that it might live. Whereas with Ray, it's a little bit more fine grained in the sense that you can say, run this actor on this machine and this actor can do all of their stuff independently of a separate actor doing possibly totally different things. And you could have a hundred actors all kind of asynchronously doing different things at once. Whereas with Spark, you really can just run the same function across the same data set unless you first pre-process and filter the data set or split the data set and run different transformations on different sections of that data. And because of this, Spark has a SQL-like API. So you think of data or what you're operating on in Spark as a table. So you have a single chunk of some amount of columns, some amount of rows, and you're essentially saying for this entire table, I wanna run this transformation across all of the rows. Whereas in Ray, you have this actor-based abstraction. And Ray does have the task API that I mentioned before earlier in, in the playlist, but Ray's unique things, I would say, are the actor-based API. So the task API in Ray is somewhat similar to the functions or transformations you have in Spark. So with Ray, you have this idea of each of these kind of chunks of code, you define a class and you say, you're a self-contained actor. Now you can define multiple different types of actors. There can be these heterogeneous actors that do different things. And Ray being a little bit lower level than Spark, you can schedule actor A on five machines and maybe actor B on two machines. And then maybe you have actor C doing something totally different. And they all are utilizing the cluster kind of together, but they're all doing separate things on each one of their tasks or on each one of their own kind of timelines. And going in line with just the other points I just mentioned, Spark has a synchronous API. So you say run line one, then once that's complete, run line two, then once that's complete, run line three, or at least that's how you think of it as a programmer. Spark does have lazy execution. So even though you might write a line and hit enter or enter some code into a terminal or something like a Jupyter notebook, Spark isn't gonna run that code on the cluster until you call an action. But when you define this pipeline of run function one, then function two, then function three, then return the results, you're guaranteed that function two is gonna run after function one. So if function two depends on something being done or pre-processed in function one, you're guaranteed that you'll have that done before your function to start executing. Ray, on the other hand, is an asynchronous API. So you can enforce this sort of lineage of this function runs, and then once it's done, it passes it to this function, and then once that's done, it passes it to a third function. But with Ray, it's not baked into the framework that it runs in this sequential um, synchronous fashion. You really have to force it to be synchronous if you need it to be synchronous, and if you don't enforce any sort of dependence between your functions or your actors, they all kind of run independently on their own timeline, which could lead to better utilization of the cluster and how you're running things. With Ray, you essentially can get results as they're computed. So you don't have to wait for all of your functions and all of your actors to complete. You'll just get the results on your driver program whenever they finish executing. And to really kind of hammer home the 
nice complementary but somewhat opposed relationship between Spark and Ray is that Spark has a very functional API in the sense that you operate at the function level. This is kind of the finest grain that you have in the Spark API is here's a function and this function runs on all of the data. Ray, on the other hand, is really designed around these stateful computations. And because of that, its main abstraction, again, it has tasks, which are functions, but its main abstraction that makes it special is this object-oriented actor API. So you really just define a Python class, a normal Python class, you put your Ray decorators on, and Ray basically says, I'm gonna take this object and ship it off to the nodes on the cluster as, as needed. So with these kind of differences in the design of Spark versus Ray, let's talk about when you would use one over the other and why you often wanna use both together. So Spark is really geared towards doing large scale distributed data processing and transformation. So with Spark, if you have, let's say a large 10 terabyte data set, it's a bunch of text files and you wanna turn all of those text files into some features to use in machine learning algorithm, you need some numeric representation. Spark is really great for that. It's really efficient. It's really kind of purpose built for that. Ray, on the other hand, actually doesn't do distributed data processing that well, or it doesn't give you a lot to do it. You can do it with Ray, but it doesn't have any built-in abstractions to really do that type of distributed scalable data processing. And instead it focuses more on the algorithm or the computation. So you can do these distributed asynchronous algorithms. And going in line with, with just that, Spark's really made for data heavy workloads. So if you have a large data set or a large amount of data that you need to do somewhat quick transformations or computations to, Spark really excels. Ray, on the other hand, is probably better suited to computation heavy workloads. So if you need to do a lot of heavy computation in a distributed fashion, but maybe you don't actually need to do it on any or, or much data at all, Ray really excels in, in that sense. So one way that you can think of when would I use Spark is something of a better MapReduce or an iterative MapReduce. If you need to do something, you want a nice high level API to do MapReduce like things, things that you might use Hadoop for, Spark's really your, your go-to and Spark really shines at that. Ray, on the other hand, if you're doing something, again, a distributed computationally heavy algorithmic thing, in this case, let's say you're doing some reinforcement learning. And with reinforcement learning, you have to run hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands of simulations and all of those simulations essentially start with the same data or they start with the same environment. So these don't really have a large amount of data that they need to process. But for each kind of initial set of this is our starting environment, you have to play this very computationally heavy simulation with an agent that learns from this simulation. So while there is a fair amount of data involved in reinforcement learning, especially if you're dealing with video or, or pixel data, the core of the reinforcement learning algorithms themselves are really just these complex computational processes. To give a more concrete and direct comparison between the APIs of Spark and Ray, I took some examples from the docs of the sites themselves, since I feel like the contributors who write the documentation are likely going to put first the examples that really exemplify the API best. So this first example here is Spark's canonical word count program versus Ray's just introduction to tasks. So this is Spark's API versus Ray task API. So notice with the, the Spark API, you essentially always have to start off with some data or file. So in Spark's case, it has this really nice function to just read a text file, then with that text file, first you do a flat map to split each line into individual words. Then you do a map to essentially make these tuples of a word and just a single count. And then finally you do reduce by key to essentially count up all these words. And at the end, you save this back to a file on the Hadoop distributed file system. So this really kind of exemplifies both the synchronous as well as the kind of data first API of Spark. Whereas with Ray, this is just Ray remote. It's running some function. It takes some input. 
and it gives some output. Now with Ray, you could have the input actually be data, but notice that in the Ray API, we're essentially just going through a normal Python range iterator. So with Spark, the text file essentially turns a large data set into something of an iterator that you iterate over. And the Spark API makes this large text file feel like just a normal Python iterator that you can map over. Whereas with Ray, you're literally just going through each one of these normal Python elements on your driver and passing those to your cluster with function.remote. So just to kind of summarize this, now that we saw kind of a conceptual comparison and we saw a comparison in code of, of the two frameworks, um, I just wanna leave you with kind of the salient points, if you will. So with Ray, one of the big things that might be surprising for, for newcomers, I know it was surprising for me, is that it doesn't have any built-in like primitives or data structures to partition data across a cluster. If you wanna send your data or do some distributed operation to a large data set, you really have to either just load that entire data set in the kind of global cache of the Ray cluster or send it to each machine and have each machine or have the network send out this data to every single machine and every machine is gonna have the entire data set. Or thirdly, you basically are gonna to have to program with Ray what Spark does automatically. So you can, before you send all this data to the cluster, shard it and split it up in your driver program and then send each of those splits to specific machines on your cluster with Ray. But again, you're kind of implementing a Spark API in Ray since Ray is a little bit lower level and you might as well just use Spark from the get-go. The thing that Ray does that Spark, you can kind of, again, you can do both things with each of these frameworks. You can just write this in straight Python if you wanted to, but the use cases of using Ray over Spark is that it is one of the few kind of libraries like it that lets you do this stateful computation. So if you need to do some algorithm in a distributed fashion that keeps some internal state or some sort of kind of incrementing or metrics, Ray is really, really your go-to. And thirdly, if you don't really depend on this synchronous, run this operation, then run this operation, then run this operation, when you're all done, give me a nice data table at the end. If you don't need that linear flow, Ray is a little bit more flexible in how you define, I would say, dependencies between actors or functions. With Ray, you have this asynchronous execution where each agent is kind of its own sequential stream of operations. So within each agent, you're guaranteed that you have just a normal linear kind of sequential Python-like programming. But across your cluster, across your agents, Ray functions in this asynchronous fashion. So if you do need to benefit from that, then Ray is kind of your go-to. And with this asynchronous execution, one thing that I'll say that Ray is kind of accidentally built for, I say accidentally because Ray was really initially started to do reinforcement learning in a distributed fashion, but the characteristics that make distributed reinforcement learning algorithms run really well also work for serving machine learning models in production. So if you have a bunch of web requests coming into your server, you need to do auto scaling, you need to do load balancing, you need to kind of allocate machines that run this prediction and give results back. Um, that's where Ray, again, really shines with this asynchronous execution. So if you made it to the end, thanks for sticking with the video. None of the future videos depend on anything in this video. So if you've never used Spark, if you don't know about Spark, if you are confused, don't worry. You don't need to know what, what's in this video for the future videos. This was more of just if someone is coming to Ray, if they are new and they're not sure what or how to use it, this is kind of the Ray for the maybe experienced data scientist or engineer.